Imagine you're a cyclist and invited to participate in the legendary Tour de France bicycle race. Dream come true. This world famous race is about 3,500 kilometers long, goes across many provinces of France, and consists of 21 day long stages over the course of 23 days. So, you'll ride about 5 hours the first day, if you ride fast. Then, you'll ride another 5 hours the next day and another 5 hours the day after, and then another 5 hours, and again and again, and on and on. During those 23 days of racing, you'll get only 2 rest days. Every day you'll spend 5 hours biking and then spend the 19 hours between races recovering. No matter how well prepared you are for the first day of racing, you'll need to recover fast and be ready to bike your best the next day. You want your recovery to be as efficient as possible. Actually, it sounds a little more like a recovery race than a bicycle race, but I guess that doesn't sound as exciting. So, how do you recover efficiently after a long bicycle ride or basically after any intensive cardio workout? Let's talk about a routine that can help you recover efficiently and avoid lasting fatigue and tight muscles the next day. Coming up! Hi, Andre here. Welcome to The Practical Health. If you don't know me, I'm a health enthusiast, probably like you. I'm trying to learn as much as possible about health and well-being and apply that knowledge to myself. I've also raced in the Tour de France 12 times. Just kidding, that part is not true. Anyway, on this channel, I share my learnings and experiences and I hope these videos will help you improve your health and quality of life. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and joining our practical health movement. Let's start with some basics. The parts of your body that are heavily loaded during a cardio workout are the heart, lungs, muscles, joints, and skin. And, and your ears if you listen to loud music non-stop. Also, what does your body need for a cardio workout? A lot of water and minerals, since your body uses them heavily during a workout. And energy. Cardio workouts require a ton of energy. And technically, oxygen we inhale up to eight times more air during exercise than while resting. But I think unless you work out in a coal mine or around noxious fumes, you'll be fine. So, your goal is to replenish all these lost nutrients, remove bodily waste, and recover loaded parts of your body as soon as possible. So, what's our plan? First, water. Probably the most critical element. Rehydrate yourself after exercise. It's recommended to drink about 150% of water weight you just lost. So, if you lost 3 pounds of weight during your exercise, pretend that you're a sponge and drink 4.5 pounds of water. You don't need to force yourself to drink it all immediately, but the sooner you drink it, the sooner you'll hydrate your body back to normal. Next, the replenishment of minerals lost during the workout sodium, potassium, zinc, magnesium, chloride, and many others. During exercise, we lose a lot of minerals through sweat. A good approach is to drink mineral water. It will not only hydrate your body, but also provide necessary minerals. If you don't like mineral water for some reason, you can buy concentrate trace mineral drops and add them to regular water. I've used these mineral drops before. Just make sure that you follow the instructions on the dosage, or your mouth might might change colors. Third, take care of your muscles. Right after your workout, while you're taking a selfie for social media, for example, spend 5 to 10 minutes stretching the muscle groups you just heavily loaded. Stretching helps realign any disorganized fibers in the direction of the tension. It will speed up muscle rehabilitation. Also, you can use a foam roller to relieve muscle tightness, soreness, and inflammation. All this stretching might even up your selfie game and allow you to photograph your sweet muscles from a new and exciting angle. For those who play competitive sports or participate in the Tour de France, cooling down your muscles and joints in the cold icy water for 10-15 minutes might be a good idea. It's known as a cryotherapy. From my experience, it is as unpleasant as it sounds, and the first two minutes are the toughest. But 15 minutes of cryotherapy has shown a great effect on reducing swelling and soreness. An easier option is to do this only for certain parts of your body, like your feet. Number 5. Is replenishing your spent energy. You lose a lot of calories during a cardio workout. 
So make sure you have a healthy meal as soon as your body cools down. Include a good amount of protein in this meal. It's critical for the recovery of your muscles. A cyclist at the Tour de France spent more than 5,000 calories per stage. It's a lot of calories to replenish, which means a lot of eating. Finally, a good night's sleep and low medium intensity activities like jogging or swimming or just walking the next day will contribute vastly to your recovery. Also, another great next day activity is to visit a sauna or steam room. It will help increase blood circulation and flush toxins from your body. By the way, at the Tour de France, cyclists still ride 2-3 hours on those rest days. They call 2-3 hours of biking is a rest day. Okay, let's sum it up. For efficient recovery, drink a lot of water, ideally mineral water, during and after the workout. Stretch out right after the workout. For those hardcore athletes and future Tour de France winners, consider cryotherapy. Then have a healthy, protein-heavy meal and finally get good night's sleep and some low-medium intensity activities the next day. So that's it for today. If we are missing something, please share your recovery tips in the comment section below, especially if you actually have participated in the Tour de France. I am super jealous of you. I wish you luck exercising regularly and recovering fast. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. It will help our small channel grow. See you next time. Bye.